Hello and good evening, everyone. Uh, again, welcome back. It's great to be here once again. And of course, we have a special guest with us once more. Uh, this is Anna Souza Ramos. Hi, Anna. How are you feeling tonight? It's wonderful, wonderful to have you here with us. Hello, Caroline. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. So let's see how this will go. And I hope to be useful and to clarify some, some questions, I think. That's Perfect. Thank you so much, of course, for uh, joining our uh, whole uh, IVF webinar project. And as you know, we are here every single day, so uh, with lots and lots of topics. And as you can see tonight, we will talk about uh, another topic on embryology. This time we will discuss grading systems. So this is what uh, Anna will uh, talk about. And of course, she has a presentation on our topic. But afterwards, don't worry, it will be time for your questions. So remember to simply put them in the chat section. And of course, we will answer them for you uh, one by one. Don't hesitate. Anything that's on your mind, Anna is here to help you out. And let me just mention that um, if you don't know already, Anna uh, Sousa Ramos, she is the clinical embryologist and also a lab manager at Eva Clinic, which is located in beautiful Lisbon in Portugal. So I'm very excited to have uh, another embryologist on board with us. As you probably know, yesterday we also had a topic on embryology, but this time we will focus on embryo grading, as I've mentioned, and I'm definitely looking forward to, to see what you have prepared, Anna, so I guess we can start with the presentation then, okay? Okay. okay. Perfect. Caroline. Let's go okay. ahead then. So, as Caroline told you today, I will talk about comparing different embryo grading systems. Of course, it's a matter that has a lot of things to, to talk about, but I try to do a little resume. And of course, afterwards, if you have any kind of questions, please, I will be here with Caroline. So only to remind you, what is a human embryo? Uh, as you know, in the de development biology, a human embryo, it's a set of cells that result of a cleavage of a previous oocyte fertilized with a human sperm. And this embryo, if it will go through a process that will develop, he will give a potential life, a future baby, healthy baby. And as you know, at least who goes to RT techniques, it starts with the fertilization, as I just mentioned, of the female cell by the spermatozoon or sperm. And afterwards, it starts a process of mitotic divisions, and that will give rise to the embryo, or in a first phase, what we call a pre-embryo. Afterwards, he'll keep on cleaving uh, with the cleavage, and uh, he will get more and more cells until, in the end, he will get to a blastocyst stage, that what we call uh, embryo that is pre-implantation. It's Comparing to the natural cycle, it's the embryo stage before doing the hatching in the uterus of a female. But why do we select the embryos in the techniques? You know that one of the, 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 the ways to improve the success and the rates of the implantation is selecting the embryos. And we do this to improve the life birth rates to maximize the use of all embryos with the implantation potential, and at the same time to achieve low multiple pregnancy rates because we try to transfer less embryos, and of course to select the best embryos to freeze, to go to the cryo storage for future attempts to a cumulative birth. And we can select the embryos in different stage. So after the fertilization and the first steps, we can do the selection on day two, day three culture, what we call cleavage stage, on the day four culture, what we call morula stage, and, in, and on a blastocyst stage, usually day five or day six culture. 
And usually to select these embryos, when we're talking in cleavage stage, we have to, we based our selection in these factors like the number of cells they have, the size of the cells and the symmetry, the fragmentation cytoplasmic that may exist, the granularity, multinucleations, and a lot of uh, another aspects. And regarding to these different things, you can consider different grading as you are going to see further. While when we're talking in the moral stage, we keep to select or grading the embryos, also the number of cells they have, the compaction, that's when the cells of blastomeres, is, blastomeres lose their definition, and if it has some fragmentations. This stage, it's usually a stage that we usually don't use so much, depends of the clinics, depends on the, 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 the countries and the protocols, because sometimes it's difficult to, cl to classify it on this stage. The moral, it's, it's um, I like very much of this selection of this stage, but it's more difficult. And of course, in our days, most common it's the blastocyst stage, we usually on five day or six day culture. But here the embers has a different aspect, as you may see. You don't see a number of cells, you see a huge round cell that has a lot of things, small things that there are cells and it has a cavity we call buster cell. It has the inner cell mass and it has the trophoectoderm that is this external round cells. And the, this blast, the blastocyst, the embryo in this stage has an expansion. So he, through the, the development, he will increase the size. And usually in some cases it has hatched blastocysts. So we have a lot, lot of parameters to, to, to select that are included in the grading system. But for all this, we have to go to different process, how we do this. Uh, we can do in the traditional manual observation, it's not really manual, you go through a microscope because you have to magnify the, the, the image of the cells, but it's the oldest way of doing, it's based in the morphology and these parameters that I've just said before. In our days, the most common is using the time-lapse Im imaging that it's incubators with a system of time lapsing that not only may you to, to analyze the morphology, but also the cinetics, the different times of the development of the embryo. I will get forward uh, about the time lapse. But since we are talking the different grading and comparing the, grad the grading systems, since the first baby has more than 40 years, the first baby from RT techniques, a lot of systems have been developed through, this, through these years. But the main basis of all, it's the same. It's the number of cells, the fragmentation, and usually the difference that you have, it's between numbers and letters. But if you can compare them, they, in the end, mean the same. So when we're talking in cleavage stage, you have more grading systems, but I, I show you here two. One used from ACBIR, the Spanish Association of Embryologists, and one using in the UK from the Association of Clinical Embryologists. And if you can see, the ACBIR system use a grading in the cleavage stage embryos. They two and three, they culture embryos. He used mostly letters, the grading of A, B, C, D embryos. And this grading is based on the number, uh, on the day of culture, 
of the number of cells, for instance, when we are talking in day two, usually the embryo should have four cells, four blastomeres, regular, with the same size, with less than 10% of fragmentation, no multinucleation, no granularity, no vacuoles. And if we go to the UK system, you have the same, but the grading, it's with numbers. You have imagine the same embryo with four cells, but you grade for four, four regarding to regular and even size division with the symmetrical blastomeres and also with less than 10% of fragmentation. So this is only to you to see that the base is the same, but then one grading it's with letters and the other is with numbers. When we talk in blastoph blastocyst stage, has a lot of going on since 2000. The first system was uh, from Gardner and the blastocyst grading, it's more complicated since it has three main issues. The expansion of the blastocyst, the inner cell mass and the trophoectoderm. And usually the main thing regarding the inner cell mass and the trophoectoderm, it's the number of the cells, the cohesion of the cells, if it has no de degenerated cells. But this was the first system for the blastocyst st stage grading. And from that, a lot of systems came along, like this week, 2003, also with numbers and letters, because usually in blastocyst, the most common uh, grading use not only numbers, but also letters altogether. Usually the number is regarding the expansion of the blastocyst. And then the first letter is regarding to the, the morphology of the inner cell mass. And afterwards, the second letter is regarding the trophoectoderm cells. This is only to compare. Also, Asevir has a system of grading the blastocyst using all letters because in the beginning, the Asevir system from Spain, the first grading system, they didn't use or they didn't um, use they didn't use the the expansion. Uh, they only considered the, the trophoectoderm and the inner cell mass, but afterward it was reviewed. And you can see, only to have an idea, that the grading A, B, C, D, it, uh, it's regarding to the inner cell mass and to the trophoectoderm. So usually a blastocyst, you can consider an AA or AB, and usually a, it's the best grading, and D, it's the worst. Like the numbers, depending on the, the, the grading systems, in some cases you have one, it's the best, and the, the number three, it's the worst. And you will check that later on. Here you have a concrete example of a classification of the blastocyst and the different systems, as I was telling. Um, Re regarding to Gardner's system from 1999, imagine he classified the blastocyst with a, a very good expansion. We are classifying this blastocyst in, in the image that you can see. And it's a very good expansion, large. The zona pellucida, that is the membrane that it's all around the cell that protects the embryo. It's very thin before it does the hatch. and it has a good inner cell mass, so it's grading A. And it also has a trophoectoderm, very good, also classified A. Usually the good quality, it means that has a lot of cells. And it has a specific form of do a calculation of a scoring the, the these embryos. And regarding to this embryo, you can classify it with this grading like 4AA, or you can give you a scale in this system 
that is with numbers and you multiply the numbers and give you the best score here that is 36. For instance, in the clinic where I work, in our clinic, we in our days use the Istanbul consensus system. It's a grading from Alpha and Nash. We will, we will see that in a few minutes. We call this blaster, we will classify, we will, we will grade this blaster with 311. And it's it's exactly the exactly base for this grading. You have the number three regarding to the expansion of the blastocyst. The inner cell mass, it's one, it's the best one. And also the trophoectoderm, we are grading one because it has very, very good cells. So as you see, you have here three systems of grading, Dif different, but that means the same. So because of this difference, um, the European Society of Human Reproduction and Embryology, together with alpha scientists and other groups like ACEBID, the RCS, that is the, the old ACE, SART from states and another, another um, associations, they get together and they come along after discussing how to improve because a lot of things going on. The embryos go from a clinic to another, from a country to another, and we need to talk all the same language regarding to the embryology. And if we have a system common to all places, it was easier when you do the report regarding the, the treatment with the embryos. It's easier for the embryologist that will receive the embryos to see, okay, this is 311, I know what it is. And so for this reason, they get a consensus points regarding, they, they put all together the information and they achieve the best way of doing, the best and simple way, because sometimes complicating the things, it's not the best way of doing. And so they base in the time of the observation, the fertilization or sites in the embryos, and they together define the, 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 the hours that should be done. That was one of the main consensus points. Also, they get to a grading system that it can be applied to all countries, to all places. And also they have a lot of more consensus points like the definition of a non-viable embryo. That is one embryo that will, will stop the development, okay? Or that starts to degenerate. And for that reason, he cannot be transferred or he cannot be cryopreserved. And this Istanbul consensus, this, this article that came out, uh, start with this point, this is the fertilization check when it should be done at what hours and then they define the hours that you should see the four cell stage where you should see the eight cell stage and forward and afterwards they also defined a scoring a grading for the embryos the cleavage stage embryos like two day two or day three culture as you can see this, they use these two terms. They have a grading of numbers using from one to three, where one is the best and the three, it's the lowest or the poorer. It doesn't mean that it's not a viable embryo, okay? But it means that this embryo with poor quality or poor grading has maybe a lower chance to implant and give a, a good pregnancy and in a common way of talking it's this grading one two three we call good fair or poor embryo okay so it's very common when we talk with the patient saying oh this is a good embryo and patient asks but what is the grading and we say one two or three and the description it's to let you know how to classify for instance, the grade one has less than 10% of fragmentation of the cytoplasmic and have an even cell size, and usually it has no multinucleations. 
The same we can see in a moral stage. They also define keep the same grade, one, two, or three, and the good, fair, or poor. Usually in this stage, in the moral stage, you can find this aspect of the embryo where you start to lose the definition of the cells. You like that fruit that, and, um, and has no fragmentation, no losing cells. And that usually it's the good embryo, the grading one. Only in the blastocyst stage, they came along with this system, all with numbers, with no letters, okay? And it has the same base. It has the expansion of the blastocyst, the inner cell mass, uh, the inner cell mass uh, morphology, and the trophoectoderm morphology and the number of cells. Usually, the, the grading when we talk about the blastocyst stage, it's one when it's starting to to form the blastocyst have a, have a small cavity, okay. And when you have the four related to expansion, we are talking of the hatchet blastocyst. It's completely full. It's completely large, preparing and start to lose the membrane. Regarding to the ICM. One, it's when you have the best number of cells. You have a high number of cells, very tight, very um, with a, uh, very compact. And when you have a poor inner cell mass, you sometimes you don't see really that exists an inner cell mass because it's very poor of cells. And regarding to the trophoectoderm, the same happens. One, it's the best the best uh, grading it's good it has a lot of cells a cohesive epithelium when you have poor it's very few cells so this is what came out from this consensus from istanbul in 2011 and it it helped us to classify classify all over the world usually in blastocysts you already know you use the system grading with three numbers one for the expansions the second for the inner cell mass, and the third for the trophoectoderm. In our days, we can say that everybody in the lab knows this system. You can opt for another system, Sebir or wherever, but you know what this system means. It's international, okay? But even this system depends on our evaluation. And one, one of the main thing, it's the subject, subjectivity of the operator, of the technician that does, does this evaluation. And even we see the blastocyst, and when you are a younger embryologist, sometimes you say, oh, it has so many cells. But if you are an experienced embryologist, say, no, this is not a very good ICM, for instance. This is a medium ICM. You have, you need to see more blastocysts. So the subjectiveness depends of the operator, the experience of the, the, the operator. And for that reason, and uh, another, th another, thing, uh, another thing that comes uh, out, it, it was the development of a system like the time lapse. And this what provides you, that an incubator that has a system that will go continuously evaluate the embryos because it has an inner camera that films or takes some photos always, 24 hours by 24 hours. And that way you can see everything that you didn't see before because usually with the manual method, what happens is that the operator have to take out the embryos from the incubator and check them on the microscope. With the time-lapse machine, this doesn't happen. And when we start to use this kind of um, equipment, a lot of things increase and, and we get start to have better results. And we thought it was because the evaluation of the embryos, but it was not only by, because of that. Because with this system, you don't interfere with the culture conditions that is, are very important for the embryo development. You don't change the pH, you don't change the temperature. And 
another thing that happens at the same time it's okay you have so much more information you see the visions you see the embers go forward and then they go again for the first stage they like lose blasters blastomers in in in, a, in in the development and a lot of questions starts what do, does this mean this is good it's it's a good thing or not so we all start with these dynamics of the cinetics and how to to grading this and so the best way is go through uh, exact science like mathematics and we try to develop algorithms but what we did fun you have so much information that you didn't know what what does it mean and a lot of calculation starts with the time of division and now we know what is the range and what is the the, the time that the embryo should has the first division the second division and with this we start to do a lot of calculations to see with the, this morphocinetic information what will be the best embryo or the embryo that has a, a better implantation rate a lot of studies were done for different groups from uk from us from from spain and until now it was not possible to get a unique algorithm so you have different like you have the different grading systems only carrying the morphology you have some different algorithms because it, it's not possible to have one the same one for all the places because this kind of, of grading system um depends of a lot of factors that as you will see right away but only to 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 understand you have the time of divisions and for instance you have sometimes the direct cleavage it's when an embryo instead of divide for two cells afterwards for three and afterwards to four it's one embryo then for one cell the divides directly to for three for instance and usually those embryos the studies show that has a per implantation rate so we can see now that with the the, the time lapse machine and usually these embryos have poor grading it's like in a here as you see and uh, a lot of things going on so when they don't do the division in this the time the, the the proper time they can increase or decrease the rate of grading and usually the grade a it's the best one a or a plus and the f usually you can exclude or has a poor implantation rate because as what i was told in, telling a lot of grading systems have been developed and also with the Mesego group from Spain, Basil, and you can see some of them use numbers also scoring with the morphocinetics and, and the others use letters. And usually what you have been seeing is sometimes you have a good grading in the morphocinetics, but then the embryo doesn't go to the blastocyst sometimes this may happen and for that what i was trying to explain you it's that the algorithms it cannot be the same because they depend directly from the laboratory conditions imagine we have another clinic in lisbon we had one in st petersburg and we cannot use the same because there are some difference in the, the lab the same with other groups and it because the algorithm even it's a mathematic thing it has a lot of variability and has a lot of influence of multi factors so it's why we cannot use it like doing um uh, a net like two and two are four because it, it it's not the same thing and because the cell division it has a lot of factors that involve the correct development but one thing is it's for granted at that 
this morphosynastic system and the, the grading help us to select the embryos. Usually when you have the exactly morphology, you can go through the synetics and you can see, okay, this embryo done the things well. So this one has a, be a, be a better implantation rate. But we still, this morphocinetics still depends of the people and the operator and the technicians. And sometimes the divisions that we see, because the time lapse gives you a lot of frames and you have to go through all of them. And sometimes it's a matter of second that you lose something or not lose. You maybe grade this way, like in that second, the, the membrane was finishing the, the, the vision of the embryo and, the, and our, your colleague said, no, maybe it's one minute after it. And that influenced the algorithm. And for that instance, all the studies they are trying now, it, the development, it's through the development of the intelligence, the artificial intelligence, to try to get over with the subjectivity, even with the morphocinetics. And so there are now some studies that they try to improve this morphocinetic system without the subjectivity of the, the, the operator, of the technicians, because it will go through the milestones and that so many times the human eye cannot even detect. And that way maybe it's easier to cr create a new algorithm and that way maybe you, we also can use the same grading for morphocinetics to all the countries, to all the clinics, to all the centers. But since there are these different gradings because you have these different systems, it doesn't mean that one is better than what the, the, the be, better than the, the other because you need to know what the clinic that is near you has because not all hospitals not all centers have the same equipments but you need to know that all works okay even the traditional it still works it's the one that has more experience for all these years and for that reason, I give you these notes only that was published by Ash from the, the European Society in 2015. That's more important. What you need to keep is that um, the embryo selection, it's and uh, for transfer and cryopreservation, it's based is still based most on the mostly with the morphology aspects. If you have, of course, the time lapse it's together the morphology and the synetics, okay? Of course, a lot of new parameters are development with now with all the stress, oxidative stress, the, the fluorescence, the, the, the um, what we call the, the environment where the embryos are, the glucose, a lot of going on maybe in very near or in the next years we get more news, but at the present time, you need to know that still the morphology is the base. Of course, time lapse for sure. Very soon we are going to the artificial intelligence. But the, the main reason it's that the decision depends on the number of the embers that you have that are based on the quality, the grading, and the stage of development the female age, the ovarian response, a lot of these factors, okay? Sometimes it's not saying only that that embryo is grading 311, okay? You have to see all the treatment. And of course, as I think the most of you may know, try to transfer the single embryo transfer, only one embryo, okay? Not put females, the women in risk of having a multiple pregnancy. Sometimes people are trying and trying treatments, but it's better to have a healthy pregnancy. And now with these grady systems, they let us choose the best embryo or the embryo that has a high implantation rate. 
because in the end, what we all want is a healthy baby. Hope to get to you. And now, Caroline, I think you may have some questions. I don't know. Please do feel free to, to ask. Wonderful. Thank you so much indeed for a thorough presentation. You have explained all the details, how the gradings work. So thank you so much for all of that. And yes, now it is time for all of your questions. So again, let me just remind everyone that if you would like to ask anything, this is your time. Go ahead, type those in, and Anna will definitely help you out with them. And let's have a look. Okay, we do have some questions ready. So the first question is from Margie. Would uh, would you select an embryo with the best ICM and then the best TE? Okay, it's a very nice question. Usually, if you are comparing the ICM, the last studies, it's funny because they are defending to select to select the best trophoectoderm. So there are now recent studies that is better when you have between two blastocysts and you have one with a bare ICM and the other has not so good ICM, but has a, a very good trophoectoderm, you go through the trophoectoderm, okay? Um, I think, I'm not sure if you are a patient or, or um, uh, embryologist, I think you need to, to, to do the choosing regarding how the things work in your lab. Okay, um, of course, I think it's very important to do things because the inner cell mass will develop the embryo afterwards. But it, you have to to have a, 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 a something that is equilibrated between the ICM and the, and the trophoectoderm. Uh, and sometimes it's difficult to, to respond. You have to see the blastocyst. But the last studies they they assure you that the best implantation rate is uh, related to the, the best trophoectoderm. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much indeed for uh, that, uh, of course, question, very first question, and for your help with this as well. Um, let's have a look. Okay, uh, another question, a bit of a longer question is here. So from my egg retrieval at 34, I had 14 eggs in total, 12 mature, giving us nine blastocysts. How many of them would you expect to be normal? DNA fragmentation is 22% and karyotype is fine for me and my husband. Many thanks for your help. Usually, if you have, okay, I don't, I'm not sure here how many good embryos you had on, on, day, on day three, but um, at least to, to your age, it's not supposed you have um, genetic problems, okay? It's something... Even if you get good blastocyst, I think you have a, a very high percentage of getting uh, good embryos with a good implantation rate. Okay, if it because if you go further in the age and you go to women with forty years old, it's a little bit different. Since you get from twelve mature, if you had nine blastocysts, you have more than fifty percent of embryos going to blastocyst stage. That is a very nice thing because usually um, when you have good embryos on day three, only 50 or 60% get to blastocyst. And if you have this rate, you have a very good prognosis. Even, okay, we, you talk also the DNA fragmentation, but the karyotype is okay. You're still 34, so you have a very good prognosis. All right, again, wonderful. Thank you so much indeed uh, for your question. And well, let me go straight to the follow-up that we have received, okay, from the very same patient. So I was diagnosed with high NK cells. Do you think I would have better chances to transfer two day five embryos together? Okay, you have one thing what we call cumulative, tri a cumulative pregnancy. Um, I'm not sure what age do you have, uh, but uh, cumulative pregnancy it goes with cumulative tryings. So 
um, uh, if you're less than 38 years old, even with the, the with your diagnosis, I would go to single embryo transfer since you have blastocyst embryos. Uh, um, instead of transferring to, that's for sure. I'm not sure your age. It's something that we need to consider if you, if you were more than 40, but um, for sure one. All right, again, thank you so much. And if you have any follow-ups, okay, you know what to do, okay? So let's, uh, let's have a look. We have more questions coming up. Uh, next question from Sebastian. Do you freeze marula embryos? Is there a risk of denaturation during cryopreservation? Okay. Thank you very much for this question. You know, as I told you, marula stitch, it's not so common. Uh, embryologists usually don't like so much of this stage. In my experience, I do like, and I tell you more, I do prefer sometimes freezing marula stage and thawing after a for a frozen embryo transfer cycle. So I freeze morulas and then I thaw one day before the transfer. And usually morulas survive very, very near 100%. Only if they don't survive, it was something that happened with the, the, the freezing method. Uh, but with the vitrification nowadays, good morulas have a very nice survival rate. Uh, of course, Usually people don't like so much because it's you don't have the 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 the, the blastomies, the distinguished blastomies of eight cells, and you don't have the blastocysts. The main problem sometimes with the blastocysts, if you don't have the the vitrification or other cryopreservation method well established, what happens it's with the blastocyst blastocell cavity, the the um, the interference with the water that the blastocyst has and with the cryoprotectants and that interfere with the, um, the, the rate of survival. That why, that's why some, some centers, they do like to collapse the blastocyst before freezing. I don't collapse the blastocyst and I have good results, but definitely I like very much Marla of course, I do most of the freezing in our center on the blastocyst stage, but my experience with Morales is very good. Excellent question, Adit, and thank you so much for answering uh, that one as well. Uh, at least for now, uh, next question might be our final question. So if you have any more, you know what to do. Do it now and it's a bit of a longer question let's have a look we had two different donor stimulation first round was lousy donor was uh, 24 16x results uh, in four blastocysts and one good healthy blastocyst second round we had 20x and nine blastocysts and good quality healthy blastocysts my dna fragmentation result is excellent what do you think went wrong in the first round Second, uh, second donor was 30 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the, the donor process, it's all, always very complicated because, um, oh, okay, see could in second round. Okay. Because uh, even when we talk donors, we know that they are female, very young, and you have a higher quality uh, with their eggs. What happens is like all the, the cells, they are cells that resist very well the freezing, the, the, the X injection, the stimulations, and there are cells that don't, don't resist or don't respond so well. As the other cells, of course, usually younger cells have a probability of work better for a lot of reasons, mainly genetically, of course, but regarding to the resistance, of course, and the ones they are they are frozen also. But this may happen if we talk only in the, the aspect of the female oocytes you have a lot of things going on you know that the oocytes is the cell that has a higher concentration of water so and 
it has a lot of going on regarding to the eggs that may happen. If you have a high number of cells, they can influence the quality of the same eggs. And um, when you, 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 you compare here, sometimes it's the, 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 the donor, um, because like the other female, you have donors that each, each um, treatment they, they do it, they give a pregnancy and you have another kind of donuts that they may try three treatments and they never gave rise to a treatment. That's it's the truth and may happen. And usually when they, it happens, then you don't, you won't recruit them again, but you only know that after using their own cells, okay? So, of course, I'm not talking about the, the sperm or the information, but of course, for to create the embryos and the blastocysts, you have the interference of the sperm with the egg. So, of course, you say that the NEA frag is excellent, and I think you don't have anything to 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 worry about with that. But sometimes it, it's the quality cells, and you cannot uh, um, know what is going to happen uh, because it's a new range of cells okay what i want to say it's like patients we all have our own cells and even in if you go to two different stimulations one cannot give an, uh, can give you or not any pregnancy and the second give it depends of the pool of the cells that you pick up in their collection and all the presses um, of course, the first one has 24, you, you, you would be expected that you have a, a better results, a better blastocyst. I, I do understand, but what I usually talk with my patients and we need to pass through, it's that we cannot control all. And regarding to the cells, I know that the donor have usually are younger and the cells should have a better quality, but sometimes it may not happen like that. And sometimes that's why with the first donor cycle doesn't went so well, but it's difficult to explain. And then you go to a second and it goes all and you get blastocyst and you get a pregnancy. And again, thank you so much indeed for uh, amazing question, but also for your thorough answers. There are so many things we could discuss today. Yeah, it would take uh, another webinar, I think, even. But uh, thank you so much. That's definitely interesting to know. Um, okay, let's have a look. Viso has added one more question. So the culturing, I think, I'm not sure, sorry, in the lab has no culture. Yes. It has. It may have. I'm mm -hmm. not. I'm not sure if the, this is. Yeah, regarding to the the previous it, question. Yes. Yeah. It, it it's the same. It, it's to the same. Okay. I I do understand. Yes, it may have. But when I'm talk to the air quality, usually if you have this system, and usually not in nowadays the the the, um, the labs where you do the, these techniques. They have systems of quality and you, you go through soaps to different protocols that have to maintain this quality. And there is this factor, this vari variable uh, that is very important, that is the, the, the egg or the sperm. Even imagine if your partner, if even with the sperm, you have this difference, even with the donor, a perfectly normal donor that has normal parameters sometimes when they do, do they do some collection one day they may have 80 millions of sperm with a higher uh, motility and if they try a retrieval uh, a collection maybe two weeks after it can change okay so it depends of course the egg collection it's it's a little bit different because while the sperm you have this renewal three months for three months okay 
And of course, if you do, the sm if you smoke, if you drink, it has influence in the quality of the sperm. And it's easier to, to, to notice because it's easier to, to diagnose something with the sperm because of the amount, the motility. Regarding to the eggs, it's not so easy because when you do the puncture to a derma, first you see the complex and they look okay. You look the maturity, you look they are mature and they have the polar body. The, you can start to evaluate if the cytoplasma it's okay, if you don't have any inclusions, any granularity. But, and you do believe that genetically it's everything okay, but you only will know after you do the, the, the process. Of course, the culture is very important. You have to be sure that the lab, it's all okay with the cultural conditions. And I don't know when you talk about the donor stimulation, I assume that they were fresh cycles and not frozen. Because when you go to frozen donor eggs, you have a lot of things going on because you, okay, fresh, okay, okay. So it's something with the eggs, okay? You have very good donors for sure, that each egg retrieval gives you more than one child in different receivers. And you have donors that don't give pregnancy. It's difficult. It's something that you don't see or you don't lis listen often. It's difficult to show because otherwise it's difficult. People that need eggs from donors go to the treatment but it's to be conscious that it may happen. And even with donors that have their own child, okay, even a young donor with 30 years old that already has child from their own may give, may give a lot of eggs and she cannot give pregnancy in a, a receiver. Usually in the labs, what, what, what I can say that maybe calm you down is that usually when you see something in, in a, imagine this donor has this cycle with a lot of cells and we didn't have so much good results, she, this donor will be, won't be again recruit or won't be again uh, to go through a stimulation. It may happen, okay? Or you can give another try to see if it was something punctual. And because also depends, the embryos depend of the sperm. So I can, what I can tell you is, imagine this donor, the first donor, if you go, if she goes to another stimulation and you have the same results, she will be excluded. It's something with their own cells, but you didn't know because she was young. She has the test, genetic test. It was everything okay, but they, they, she doesn't give you a good blastocyst or pregnancy. But if she in the first one didn't give so much blastocyst and in the second one she gives and give pregnancy, okay, it's something that is punctual that should be analyzed if it was the sperm or anything. Yeah. All right. Amazing as again, thank you so much. And thank you, Lisa, for your follow-ups, because of course I love that it's a bit of a conversation uh between you between you, Anna, and of course our patients. And Lisa uh, wants to th say thanks as well. <laughs> thank you so much. You. All right, uh Sebastian, one more question from you. So let's have a look. If you have just one fertilized egg, what you do, blastocyst culture? That's a very, very nice question. You know, not everybody agrees in this kind of questions. I think that it depends uh, on the overall of the treatment. Um, uh, the main issue is you have to see the couple that you are going to treat. You have to be how many tries they are doing, how old they are. And most important, in my opinion, is if they are prepared for not having a transfer. For instance, in my clinic, I have patients that are very old. You know, in, the, in Portugal, the private clinics can, go to, can do treatments till 50 years old to women, of course, with their donation. But 
what happened is sometimes people is trying their last treatment with their own eggs and you only have one and it's the last one because maybe the, the, the doctor already told you that this is the last time that she has a poor response, she has no uh, ovary reserve and the next step will be donation. And you have to talk with the patients. You have to see if they are prepared for this. Are you prepared to go all over the blastocyst stage? That would be nice because we'll give you more information from the develop development of the embryo. And if it will give you the information that, okay, it's okay, and you can transplant, and you might have this possibility of implantation. But the risk, the risk is not having a blastocyst to transfer and that way you will cancel the transfer. Or otherwise, you can transfer on day three, day two or day three, uh, because there are a lot of people, all the, and in Scandinavian places, there are these people that prefer a kind of more natural cycle. And sometimes they believe that the conditions of the women uterus are better than the incubators in the lab. And that sometimes they want to give you a try and they prefer to transfer, uh, not in blastocyst stage. So in my opinion, I should talk with the patients to see the expectation they have, okay? I had this case in the clinic, in my lab, and have always I defend, defend to talk with them because in the private clinics, they, they also have not only the emotional questions, but also the financial. And you need a lot of people because of cultural reasons and religions reasons, they are not prepared to go to donations. So sometimes they need to do go to the, this last trying and transfer the embryo, not in the blastocyst stage, instead of go until blastocyst and not having embryo. So what I do mean at is before your final decision, you have to talk with the couple or the, with your patients, okay? Because you need to know if they are prepared for everything. They never are, but you need to counseling and to see and tell you, what is what is the game here? Okay, so but in our days maybe trying the blastocyst. Excellent, thank you so much. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, we definitely need to focus on each case individually. Uh, that's the main um, reason to to for this whole uh, treatment as well. I think yeah. So thank you so much. And uh, one more question we have from Gabriela. I'm forty four. Low AMH, NK okay for failures with own eggs. At last one, I had two good blastocysts. What do you recommend? Okay, so um, okay, I don't know how many eggs. Of course, you have a low MHA. Uh, on with forty four, usually you could recommend to do the the PGD or to test the blaster to test genetically the, the, the embryo. So if you get to blastocyst and they, if they have quality, you can go to pregenetic implantation test to see if they are okay, okay? Because after 40, you have an increasing of an aneuploidies or, tri or trisomies. And it's not only have a good morphological blastocyst or, or with a good development regarding cinetics, it's very important in this age to also have a genetic, uh, well, good embryo in the genetically point of view of speaking. But you need to see if um, you already tried, if it's, it depends on what you want, if you still want to try again with your own eggs, depend of where you are, um, you're free to do it. But it depends on your expectation and um, usually in most of places when you have so many failures 
with your own ex at the age, usually they start to recommend you to go through a donation process, okay? But if you still want to try with your own ex, I totally understand. You should try to go to pregenetic test implantation. Uh, the only thing is, I'm not sure if the quality of the oblastocyst will allow you to do the pregenetic test. Okay, it's something that you have to consider because you may not have quality in the embryos to do the DGPA. Okay, so it's something that you have to consider. Gabriela, again, for your question, and of course, Anna, uh, it been, I believe it's been very helpful. So thank you a lot. And uh, someone is typing, so I just want to see if we, if it's another question of, uh, or we, we will be slowly finishing. Okay. So if you have any questions left, go ahead, do it now. It will be the final call for those questions. Uh, but also let me just mention that if anyone would like to get in touch with Anna, her team, there is a link right here. You can use that. There is a contact button and all of your questions will uh, be forwarded to, to Anna and her team at uh, Ava Clinic in Lisbon. And I'm sure that they will be more than happy to help you out with some more details as well. And yes, I believe we will be finishing for tonight. Uh, but before I let you go, Anna, is there anything else you would like to add? I think the, the, the most important you have in our days with all this technology that digital websites, forums, you have so much information available. And I do understand that a lot of things can come out to, to your mind. And the best way of, of doing or go through treatments, it's to put your questions to the people from health that are taking your case. The, the clinicians, the nurses, the embryologists, the, because the best way to, to, to achieve the, the, the healthy babe, it's giving all the information because sometimes patients also forgot of giving some important items that happen in their lives that may influence the, the, the right decisions during the treatment, even um, the information from the family uh, can can help us a lot in the decisions of the treatment treatments that may help you. So please do ask when you think. Don't be afraid because nobody, no clinician, no embryologist can be angry because you will put some questions. I think the the most important thing going to a process, an IVF, an IUI, an ICSI, a donation process, you have to be completely, um, how do you say, satisfied and comfortable, okay? Because otherwise, if you're not like that, you have a lot of stress and it, it helps. It looks like everything is going wrong, okay? so. Please ask and uh, and try to be completely understandable and clarifying in all stages of, of the process. Because all clinics work, all centers work. There, the, it it doesn't exist the best center in the world. Because if if it would exist, it had a hundred percent of of rate of success, and it has a lot of people going to from all around from world all world to to that center so in portugal uk china usa france spain you have clinics all over the place and they all have good and quality specialists that will help you for sure Wonderful. Per perfect summary, really. Thank you so much, Anna, for adding that uh, those final comments. Thank you so much indeed. And as I mentioned, we will be finishing. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight for your incredible question. As always, you never disappoint. You have plenty of interesting questions. So I'm sure it's been helpful for you. And as you can see, very useful deep face. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much indeed. And uh, let me just, uh, let me remind everyone that of course this has been recorded. You will have a chance to watch this again. It will be available tomorrow 
on myaviaffences.com. Uh, go ahead, check it out. Um, some of you might already know there are over 300 webinars available on the website. So, you know, there are plenty, plenty of topics to choose from. Uh, but also we will be back. We will be back actually on uh, Thursday at 8 p.m. UK time. So I hope you will be able to join us. Uh, more, more topics are coming in. So uh, go ahead, sign up. That way you will be able to still ask more questions. And once again, Anna, it's been lovely to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. And I do believe it's been very uh, satisfying for you. So huge thanks. And uh, I guess till our next event then, okay? Yeah, thank you very much. for your Wonderful. Thank you so much. Good thank night, you everyone. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Take okay. care. Bye. Thank you too.